but just know that I still struggle. Like I still struggle in the day to day. And I feel like sometimes that almost gives me imposter syndrome because I'm like, okay, hold on a second. I talk about these things each week. I research them all the time. I read about them. I try to embody it as much as I can. I'm meditating, I'm doing yoga, I'm doing all the things. And have those things helped? Yes, of course they've helped tremendously. But I still struggle. And I think a big part of that is, is that I'm still human. <laughs> like I haven't changed to a different species since starting this podcast. I'm still human. I still have my humanness. And I know that that's okay. And I know that I will most likely always have these things. And that's why having these like tools in your toolbox, like just breathing or sitting down to meditate or to journal or talking to someone or whatever it may be, are so crucial because they bring you back in alignment. Welcome to Alignment Adventures. This is a podcast where we explore what it means to live a fulfilling, aligning, and present life. I'm your host, Lindsay Tanner, and I am so grateful that you are here. Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Alignment Adventures. As always, I am just very excited and grateful that you're here with me today. I have something really different and interesting and hopefully fun. I don't know if fun's the right word (laughs) planned for you today. And it has to do with the spooky theme of the month. As you guys may or may not know, this is my month. I love October. It's my favorite month of the year. I mean, I'm always trying to be present. That's a goal of mine, right? That's one of the pillars of this podcast. But I would be lying if I didn't say that I always look forward to October, to fall. I get to experience a true fall this year because I'm in the Midwest and not in Arizona where it's like 90 degrees plus all the time, even though it's weird because in the Midwest, it's felt like I've been in Phoenix, but it's finally starting to cool down. I'm finally starting to get the sweater weather vibes here and all the comfy stuff and the cozy stuff and the spooky vibes. So along with that, I want to do some things this month that kind of go along with that theme. And this is a topic I've had in like the queue for a while like I've had this drafted for a while with just ideas sometimes I just do that like pull up a google doc and we'll add to it every once in a while with different ideas I've had and this actually started with one of my mentors you know I've talked about her a lot Jess Lively she now goes by Bella Lively way back in the day like I want to say like 2016 2017 she did an episode of things she was scared to tell her audience. And then another girl I followed did the same thing. And I was like, that would be so fun to do. Not only is it like the spooky vibes, right? Like things I'm scared to tell you or things I'm afraid to tell you. But also I just think it's so refreshing when people are like radically open and vulnerable And I do always try to bring that to the podcast. I do try to always bring my vulnerability, my authenticity, give you guys the real deal. But today I feel like we're going to take it to another level because I have like seven or eight things that I'm scared to tell you. (laughs) So should we just jump in? Let's just jump in with my list here. So the first thing I have on here, and this may or may not come as a surprise to you, but I just want you all to know that I still worry I still have anxieties, I still have fears, I still have mind stories, I still second guess myself, I still will self-sabotage. I do feel like I have much, much, much more awareness of these stories and I also have such a deeper connection and trust to my internal guidance, aka my intuition, things that I talk about here and all the time, but just know that I still struggle. Like I still struggle in the day to day. And I feel like sometimes that almost gives me imposter syndrome because I'm like, okay, hold on a second. I talk about these things each week. I research them all the time. I read about them. I try to embody it as much as I can. I'm meditating. I'm doing yoga. I'm doing all the things. And have those things helped? Yes, of course they've helped tremendously. But I still struggle. And I think a big part of that is, is that 
I'm still a human. <laughs> like I haven't changed to a different species since starting this podcast. I'm still human. I still have my humanness. And I know that that's okay. And I know that I will most likely always have these things. And that's why having these like tools in your toolbox, like just breathing or sitting down to meditate or to journal or talking to someone or whatever it may be are so crucial because they bring you back in alignment. Hence the name of this podcast. Now this kind of leads me into the second thing that I've been scared to tell you, but that's just like how weird this stage of life has been in both ways, (laughs) the highs and the lows. But I'd be lying if I said that I haven't had thoughts recently, just like totally questioning my path, questioning, almost reminds me of like when I first started the podcast, even though I've been doing this for, it will be three years next month. (laughs) Thoughts of just doubt, like, am I doing what I should be doing? Is this the path I want to take? Like just low moments. And I've realized they're all based in fear. Like it's not like I'm out of alignment with the podcast. If it truly wasn't bringing me joy anymore, I wouldn't do it. Like that, that's kind of a non-negotiable for me in terms of like things that I'm bringing into my life now. Like if they don't bring me joy, I'm not here for it. It does still bring me so much joy, but I've really just let that like self-doubt and fear and imposter syndrome creep in. And I'm highly aware of it now. And I'm going to continue on because I can't imagine doing anything else. Like I really can't. I think, you know what I think really has rocked my boat this year? And I've made peace with it. But I really had like an identity crisis there for a while after RV life didn't work out. That's because that was something I've been dreaming about for so long. And not specifically RV life. That's a whole nother topic, how different RV life is from van life, which is what we did before and loved. Uh, But I had such an identity around, I want to go and be like a nomad and travel the country and live out of our vehicle and be a hippie, (laughs) which I still am kind of a hippie. Let's not lie. That's coming up in a different point. Um, But that was such an identity for me. That was such a big dream that I had been working towards. And then when our mindset shifted so fast, when we you know, came up in all the struggles in RV life. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, go back and check out that episode I recorded with Steven. But that changed so fast. It was so disorienting to my identity. <laughs> like, I truly feel like I had what people call like an ego death. Like I really didn't know what I wanted to do anymore because this was the thing I had been working towards and I knew that I wanted. And now that I didn't want that, like, I just felt so lost and that's kind of carried with me the past few months and like seeped into other things that I've want, like been working towards like the podcast and a big part of wanting to do RV life was so that I had time and space to devote more energy to the podcast and of course things just don't pan out the way that you imagine them to like we were way more busy doing all the RV stuff than I was in my full-time job which is just so ironic to me and so funny to me. So just kind of like reorienting myself after RV life has made this like a very interesting stage. And I questioned a lot, like I said before, just felt lost. And I was like, what do I really want to do? Like I really had to stop and take a hard look at what I want to do. And of course, it always comes back to this. It always comes back to like diving into our truth. What It truly means to live an aligning, fulfilling, and present life. So that's why I'm still here recording episodes for you each week. I'm still working through those mind stories and those things that come up. And like I mentioned in previous episodes, sometimes you think like you've worked through something and you're done and it's never going to come up again. I'm learning that's not the case. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate. Like as you continue on in life and as you grow and evolve, you just see it from different perspectives. And it's kind of like this thing you're just chipping away at. And eventually you will get to like the Michelangelo under the, what is he made out of? Marble? (laughs) Under the marble. But you just like keep chipping away at the marble. And eventually you know that 
the statue is underneath there. It's there the whole time. But you just have to like uncover it a little bit and polish it and do all the things. That's what I feel like I'm doing in my awareness right now and in my life is I just, I'm, I'm still chipping away at the stories. I'm very aware of the stories in my life and the things that hold me back, but I'm still working through them. It's not like an overnight fix. And I know that that's okay. I know that that's okay. So if you guys are there with me, just know that I'm here holding your hand. We're really not in this alone. I also believe that we're all truly connected anyways, but you're not in this alone if you feel the same way. I'm there with you if you get super frustrated that you haven't worked past the things that you've been trying to work past. Like that's just another form of resistance, right? <laughs> another form of resistance to the thing. And we're just all doing the best we can. And we learn a little bit more each day. We remember a little bit more each day. We grow a little bit more each day. And we align with our truest self a little bit more each day. And I think I think that's great. I think that's what it's about. So the next thing I'm scared to tell you, and this is very vulnerable too, but I've, I've been wanting to say this for a while. And I know it's not true, but sometimes I just wonder if anyone is listening to me <laughs> and if this is truly helping anyone's life out there as much as it impacts my own life. Now, I know that people are listening, like I can see the numbers, and that's something I try not to get too hung up on because a lot of people have listened throughout my three years of doing this. But it's also like that fine line of not getting too caught up in the numbers. And sometimes weeks go by where I don't hear anything from people. Like my friends and family will tell me how much they liked a certain episode, and I, I love that so much. The fact that I can help the people closest to me is priceless in itself. But like to hear from even outside people, people that maybe I don't talk to regularly on how this is affecting their life, I just wonder sometimes how this is affecting your life. So if you feel called to do so, you can always email me, message me on Instagram, text me if you do have my number, <laughs> and let me know just like how this has affected your life. I just find that so interesting to hear. I do have trust that it is reaching the people that it needs to reach in this time and space because I think things show up in your life when you're ready. So this podcast showed up in your life when you're ready to hear these certain messages. But sometimes, again, my mind just gets caught up in the analytics, gets caught up in the numbers. Comparison comes back in because I am human, like we have mentioned. <laughs> well, sometimes I wonder if I am human. That's, that's a point we're going to get into. <laughs> But I just, I get caught up in that story of like, am I really helping anyone? Do you know something that I've been thinking about recently? And I don't want to offend anyone if you are true crime junkies. But sometimes I get so aggravated with how popular true crime podcasts are. And that's like people literally listening to how other people got murdered. And here I am, like just trying to help people live their most aligned, fulfilling present lives. <laughs> and it doesn't seem like people are as interested in that. And I know that's just like a reflection of where mass consciousness is right now. And I think things are changing and shifting. And if that's your alignment activity to listen to true crime, no judgment here, even though that sounded very judgy in my core, I think you should do the things that align with you. But <laughs> I'd be lying if I don't. My mind doesn't get upset sometimes when I'm like, people would rather listen to stories of how people are getting murdered than how to better their lives. Like, what the hell? <laughs> but I do trust that it's reaching the people that it needs to reach. And if you're one of those people, thank you again for just being here. Thank you for tuning in each week. And I do help that this helps your life in some facet. The next thing I am scared to tell you but for a different reason. <laughs> and it kind of connects back to how weird this stage of life has been. But I do notice, and I'm scared to say this because I don't want it to come out sounding bragging or boasting or like, look at me, look how wonderful things are. But the reality of my life right now is that I have ended up manifesting all the things that I've wanted to manifest out of life. Have they come in the way that I've wanted them to or that I imagined they would? No, but I am literally doing all the things that I've wanted to do in my life up until this point. And that is wild to me. Like when I stop and think about that, I'm just blown away. And then I also get aggravated sometimes because I'm like, here I am 
I have all the things that I'm desiring in my life and I still get hung up on like the things I mentioned in the first point about like fears and struggles and worries. So that's frustrating in itself. But just to acknowledge that like the things I talk about on here have helped my life so much drastically change the way I live my life and what has come to me. You know, and that's the crazy thing. It's not necessarily about the physical things that you manifest. It's about the way you feel. And I'm just so grateful for the things I've been able to experience and feel. And again, thank you for being on this journey with me. I hope that comes across in a way that's not like, hey, look at my life. It's amazing. But I am so, so grateful for where I'm at in this stage, even though it's kind of been a crazy stage. You know, I'm not even going to downplay it. It's been a very weird stage of life. I'm nowhere where I thought I would be, but I also have all the things I've been manifesting. I hope that makes sense. Like in terms of doing this full time, in terms of quitting my job, in terms of experiencing RV life, even though it didn't work out, in terms of my family and my son and my partner. Steven is everything like I would have wanted from a partner and do want from a partner right now but like back in the day as well I can't remember if I've told this story so if I have I apologize but back when I went to therapy like over around a decade ago one of the exercises was to write down like what you don't want in a partner and what you do want in a partner and I had did that exercise and in a notebook and like forgotten about it. And then I found it like a few years after we moved to Arizona. And obviously I'd been with Steven for a few years at that point. And it just blew me away how it is exactly what Steven is. Like what I wrote down is exactly, it's like I ordered him up on a piece of paper. <laughs> I'm so, so grateful for all the things I've manifested in my life. And obviously that's something I get scared to talk about sometimes because I don't want it to come off in a weird way. But I do accredit all the things that I practice daily, all the things I talk about on here that have helped me create this life because you do create your life. You're the creator of your life. All right, moving on to the next point. Another thing that I'm scared to tell you guys, even though I do think I tell you from time to time on here, I must not be that scared, but I, I'm scared to go as deep into this as I could. But how, quote unquote, weird and woo and <laughs> spiritual I truly am like I've mentioned before like if you saw all the people I follow on YouTube it's people talking about witchy stuff it's people talking about aliens it's people talking about how this reality is a simulation it's just people all over the board and about past lives and all that and those are things that I do believe in. Those are truths to me. And here's the thing. Everyone is creating their own truth. But like 1000% I believe in aliens. And I think the government even like acknowledged it a few months ago. And like no one seemed to care. <laughs> Which who knows. That's like a conspiracy in itself, right? If they even like had legitimate information or whatever it is. But 1000% I believe in aliens. I 1000% believe in past lives. And I even think, here's me going deep down the weirdness hole but I even wonder if I've had past lives I do believe I've had past lives not on earth like that my soul may have originated somewhere else that's kind of the feeling I get thoughts on religion Ugh, guys religion fascinates me and I I've talked about that here on the podcast before but that's something I'm delicate on who I bring that up around because of course you don't want to offend people which I know is something we're all aware of in this day and age but here's here's my true thoughts about religion and spirituality and all the things I'm discussing in this topic I think we're all talking about the same thing like all religions and spiritual practices and the witchy people and hippie people and all that, I consider myself a little witchy and a little hippie, we're all just trying to like explain life, explain this reality, explain what's going on to ourselves. We're all talking about the same thing just in different ways and when you get down to the root of it, it's all the same. And I just find that so interesting. Like if I could go back to school, which I think would be fun to do this. I was just talking about how if you could go back to school just for fun. Well, first of all, I would because I love going to class and learning 
learning about things I'm interested in, right? And like taking notes and that's fun to me. But I would go back and study religion and like philosophy. <laughs> things that you probably couldn't get a degree out of, right? They always talk about like the degrees in college you can't really do anything with. But that would just be so aligning to me. So that's the point I'm trying to make with this topic. This thing I'm scared to tell you is like, I believe in a lot of crazy stuff. Like the fact that this reality may just be a simulation um, that actually gives me comfort sometimes. I know that can be scary, but that sometimes gives me comfort when I get too caught up in my thoughts or second guess myself. I'm like, oh, it's just simulation. Like just go and have fun. Like if we were to, you know, cross over at the end of our lives and realize that this was just a simulation, I feel like a lot of us would be like, dang it, I wish I went back and like didn't take things so seriously, right? I'm trying to embody that mentality now because <laughs> I have a feeling I will, you know, when that happens, I'm not ready for it anytime soon. But when that happens, when we cross over to the other side, I feel like I'm going to be like, I was right. It is a simulation. And I want to have that feeling of, you know what? I had a lot of fun. I didn't take things too seriously. I went after the things that called to me. And to be honest too, going back to, previous points like sometimes I can't even stop what's like coming out of me on the podcast like it's something I can't hold back it's something I'm so pulled to do like I can't hold back even though I doubt myself even though I'm scared I can't hold back like it just has to come out of me <laughs> that's how natural it feels so so interesting moving on to the next point this kind of connects with it all but a lot of times I worry if the way I present myself in real life aligns with what I discuss on here. I really try to embody the practices that I teach as much as I can, but I just have this like egoic worry that the Lindsay who's on the podcast and the Lindsay that people see in real life are different people, even though I'm trying to be as conscious about that as I can. Like I even notice myself in day-to-day -day conversations, I will bring up like woo topics or witchy topics in my own Lindsay way. But I think something that also stops me is I never want to be that like preachy, pushy person. And that can be hard sometimes because when something has changed your life so drastically, like the things I talk about on here have changed my life so drastically, you do just want to shout it from like all the mountaintops, right? But I'm super hyper aware of not being too pushy or preachy to the people around me because we all are the own creators of our life. We're all, I use the analogy from Abraham Hicks, baking our own cake. We're all baking our own cake. I don't want to interfere with your cake. I'm here to like inspire you if you want it, but I'm not here to force you to do anything. So I do think I can lean too much that way and then not bring up the things that I want to bring up in like day-to-day -day conversations because I don't want to seem pushy. So I'm still trying to find that balance I just really hope that the way I show up in my day-to-day -day with my friends and family, with people that just meet me, aligns with who I am here on the podcast, which I feel like it is, but it's just a mind worry that I have. Another thing that I don't know if I'm necessarily scared to tell you guys, but also just scared myself, is that since we are back here in the Midwest and settling down here in the Midwest for a little bit, which is of course where I grew up, I mean, not here in St. Louis, but in the area. Something that I'm just hyper aware of. And again, I don't want to offend anyone, but I'm sure a lot of you can relate. The mentality in the Midwest is just its own breed sometimes. <laughs> and I think that was such a beautiful part of moving away for six to seven years as I got some space from that mentality. I was able to come up with my own thoughts about certain things and I was able to grow so much but there's just kind of like this underlying tone and I do think that's shifting I think that's shifting too but just that kind of mentality of like everything's out to get you everyone is gonna take your money like that scared fear mentality when it comes to like politics and the stock market and all of that like everyone's out to get you prices are going up everything's expensive 
hopefully you guys, especially those of you who live in the Midwest of the United States, maybe if you live somewhere else, you can or cannot relate to this. It's just kind of like this underlying tone here. And I get so annoyed with conversations like that here when people are like, uh, everything's expensive, uh, politics, this and that, you know, just complain, complain, complain. I'm so worried that I'm going to like fall into that mentality, which I know I won't, but it's like, I just have no tolerance for that mentality. And that was kind of a fear of mine, you know, moving back here was that I was going to just like lose all my growth, all of my personal growth, spiritual growth, emotional growth, mental growth. I think my awareness of it is going to help me not fall back, <laughs> have a vertigo as I call it, but it's just something I'm really aware of and something I've been kind of scared to talk about on the podcast because I don't really want to offend anyone from the Midwest. It's my home. It's where I was raised. There's so many beautiful things about the Midwest. People are so kind here. You know, I'm experiencing the seasons again, which I love. There are beautiful parts of the Midwest, especially here in Missouri. I grew up in Illinois, but here in Missouri, there's just beautiful nature all around us. Pros and cons to each place, but just something I've been hyper aware of since moving back. The last thing that I'm scared to tell you guys is how much I worry about abundance, even though it always flows. It always works out. It always, always, always works out. This has just been a really unique time in my life. Obviously, transitioning from a full-time job that I've had for the last decade. I mean, I've had different jobs, but having a full-time job for the last decade and a steady income to now we have rental properties, which is a pretty steady income. And then Steven has recently got a job for a company he worked at before. But me, I am not re-entering the workforce. I'm going full in, all in into my business, into the podcast, into what I'm talking about here. And that brings up a lot of like stories around abundance. And I can worry about that a lot sometimes. But what I find interesting is that it always works out. And I hope this helps you if you are in the same boat as me, you worry about abundance. Like just think, I realize that this is also a very like privileged thing to say, but I've never been in a situation where I have had to go and like, you know, be on the streets or something, right? Like I've never been in that situation, even though our mind thinks, oh, if I quit my job, like I'll be on the streets. Like what am I going to do for money? That never happens. Like things always flow. Things always work out. Abundance always comes in, especially when you're doing what aligns for you, especially when you're following your intuition. And it can be scary. It can be unknown. Like uh, there were a lot of times that we maybe didn't know necessarily where the money was going to come from, but then it shows up in unexpected ways. And I just find that so, so interesting. I would like to do more episodes on money mindset and, you know, having that abundance mentality versus the scarcity, which I know people say scarcity, I say scarcity, <laughs> but we'll see if that flows in the future. <sighs> okay. As my friend said, I may have a little bit of a vulnerability hangover after this, but it also felt really good to share these things with you all. I hope this inspires you to maybe share some things that you're scared to talk about and to be open and vulnerable. Again, that can seem scary, but I think a lot of beauty and a lot of strength and a lot of growth can come from that. And I'm just excited to see where this adventure continues to flow me, sharing my insights on the podcast, sharing this alignment message with all of you. And again, I'm just so grateful that you're all here, those of you listening. As always, if you know anyone that needs to hear this message or would find it interesting, feel free to share this episode with them. If you are new here, consider subscribing. We have new episodes every Monday. Sometimes it's me, sometimes it's interviews with other beautiful souls on what it means to live an aligning, fulfilling, and present life. And if you haven't yet, feel free to leave a review either on Spotify or on Apple iTunes. It just helps the podcast so, so much. But I'm sending you all so much love, all the high vibes, and of course, I will see you next week on Alignment Adventures.